The Square Ball Podcast. Well, hello and welcome to the West Stand, our twice weekly show, normally out on a Monday and a Friday. Guests from across the world of Leeds United, journalists, commentators, ex players, and in this case, statisticians. We welcome back Johnny Cooper. Thanks for coming back in, Johnny. Well, thank you for having me again. Uh, Johnny's from Opta. Michael is from. My house, Pontefract. Yes. Wakefield, Harbury, depends on where, you know, which bit of my life, but yeah, Pontefract these days. Which streets you're crawling. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> uh, Dan here as well. Hello. You're right. So you're from Opta, who do stats, and let's lead off on the big Opta stat of the week, which is that Opta have made the San Francisco 49ers favourites for the Super Bowl. Well, that's, you know, the supercomputer never lies. I think it had us going up at various points last season, so... Yeah, the supercomputer was based on who was already in first and second was the main thing it seemed to always go on. Yeah, no comment. So uh, what, what do you reckon to the 49ers chance? I'm just messing with you. Yeah, because um, we, we don't know anything about not the, old, the old NFL. Uh, but it does say something about statistical models, doesn't it? I think. I don't know what it says. It just says a thing. It says that I trust those guys. Yeah. Maybe. Um, should we talk about something that's far more inside our comfort zone and that's Leeds United Football Club? Please, please. So, season so far, we've only got four games to go off. So, what have you spotted from the season so far, um, Johnny Cooper? Well, I've just gone sort of a game by game. Like you say, it's not been uh, not been too many games. I did actually include the Middlesbrough game in the, in the roundup just because it was, yeah, it was a thing. There were a few stats from it. Um, but yeah, the, the Portsmouth game... When when we scored first, obviously, I think every single time I've been in on this show, I've said score first and we'll be fine. And then obviously after 41 minutes, we were 2-1 down. I think we'd not let two goals in in a league game last year when we'd scored first. So I was just sat at the stadium, head in my hands, like I'm never going to get invited back on. My credibility is like on the floor. Um, and then obviously when they scored the last minute penalty, it just ruined all the scored first and, and not lost stats. And then obviously Brendan scored at the end. So that was very good. Um but yeah, just to go through the game, sort of like in a chronological order, obviously we hit the woodwork three times in the first eight minutes, um, which was the first time we'd hit the hit the woodwork three times in one half since November 2020 against Arsenal, which we drew nil-nil. And I think we absolutely battered them that game. I think Arteta was struggling at that point and obviously kept him on, um, which took me back to, I think I tweeted about it at the time. I don't know if you remember this, but Clark Carlisle, at Rotherham. I was at that game. Did you go to that game? I did. I don't know why it stayed in my mind. It was on Sky and I was watching it at my granddad's house and he hit the bar three times in the first eight minutes and then rolled his ankle and got subbed off. It was also the last time we had any threat from a corner. It, it was until Matt Heath turned up. Yeah, until yeah, him and Matt Heath, they were the, <laughs> the last people to win a header from Fam- a corner. Famously. Of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it was it just, it just was so strange that yeah, that Clark Carlisle incident that he got subbed off and then I was just looking back at like Rotherham were terrible at era and they were 21 games without a win and then won one nil. Even though we'd obviously had that. Mm. Cla- classic. It's classic. It classic. It classic. It was at Millmore, that one as well. Right. We moved stadium yeah. twice yeah. since then. Millmore was the one, for anybody not familiar with the geography of Rotherham, which was essentially in a scrapyard. It still exists, weirdly, and is just full of scrap. Right. Like the stadium is still, yeah, it's, yeah. It still stands, it seems, but it's just full of... Uh, like, I think it's El- full, like Elton John. It's like full of tractor parts or something in, inside on what was the pitch now, weirdly. Because huh. I think it was the scrapyard owner who owned the... Club, it was, yeah. Club, wasn't it? Like it used to be in England back in the good old days. Roth- and you- yeah, Rotherham's a bit of a strange place. Like I've been to away games there before and there's just nowhere to go before the game, like nowhere to drink and they look look upon you like no away fans in here. Yeah, and there's like three pubs. That's like, Rotherham Town Centre. <laughs> yeah, it's just not, a, it's not, not the there's best place I've here. been. <laughs> sorry, Rotherham. Yeah, sorry so would you be sorry, Rotherham? You can't apologise to a town. There'll be some Leeds fans from Rotherham. <laughs> they and- know. Um, I'm sure they're trying to get out, and I wish, I wish you luck. They'll know. They'll know. Sorry, back to Potts. Sorry, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, um, and obviously, Pascal Strike scored a penalty, um, and he'd scored in his previous two appearances as well. The end of last season before he got injured, so he was the first centre after scoring three games in a row since Jack Charlton in March 1972. Um, one of those games was the seven 0 against Southampton, the first one right at the back post. I think it was Norman Hunter crossed it. Um, and it was a third time this century we'd scored our first goal of the season with a penalty. Can you name the other two? I'm not going to... We won't hang around for too long. Ooh. First goal of the season as a penalty. Yeah. This century, so that's after the millennium. I'll give you the was, years. Uh, was, um, Go on then. Was the one a Grayson year? No. But, uh, oh, no, sorry, it was actually. It was Grayson's last season was a penalty. I've got a vague memory of this. Who was it against? It was a last-minute consolation goal at Southampton. Oh, that's not what I was thinking of. I was uh, thinking something else. Did we score a penalty against someone on the opening day, like at Ellen Road? It might not have been. The, it might not have been the opening goal. Uh, the other thing. Oh wow, well, this is that's a really good guess, Michael. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> the other one was two thousand six. 
season we got relegated actually, just after losing the playoff final. Took a lot of penalties. I can't think who it would have been. Northern Irish. Oh, David Healy, of course. David Healy. Yeah, I sort of refuse to acknowledge anything pre-2018 now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, other, the other one was Max Gradle at Southampton just before he got sold. I think that was his last last thing he did, I think, for Leeds. Oh, there you go. Um, so, yeah. Um, we went in behind at the break after scoring first. That was the first time at Ellen Road in a championship game since 2012 against Hull. So it doesn't happen very often. So usually we score first and we kick on. Obviously it didn't happen in that game. Um the last three games in the championship when we've scored first and conceded three have all been incredibly memorable. Leeds three, Cardiff three, Birmingham four, Leeds five, and then Leeds three, Portsmouth three. So we get good value for money. That Cardiff game still gives me shudders. Yeah. It was a little bit like the Everton collapse in that you sort of went, how? I know. I know it was over a much longer period of time in that that game, but we just were so good. And then... So Leeds, that's when he flicked a switch. It was Lee Tomlin turning into like Lionel Messi for mm. about half an hour. He was really good for a bit, but yeah, that was that's probably the best forty-five minutes we've probably ever played. I think <laughs> I've ever seen. First half was unbelievable. And how can it collectively get into eleven players? I, I don't know how, that, how this sort yeah. of stuff unfolds. Anyway, so but, back yeah. to back to happier times. Yeah. Um, so I was actually looking. We've only had two shots in the ninetieth minute of a championship game this season. Just overall, we've only had two shots in the ninetieth minute. Brendan Aronson had both of them against Portsmouth. When you say 90th minute, you, do you mean the actual specific one minute or anything from 90 Just minutes onwards? Anything from the 89.01 seconds. Anything on, that. Onwards? Onwards. Two All shots. Right. And they were both Brendan. So we're either dead comfortable or not trying, as was the case with West yeah. Brom, which we'll get onto in a minute, Absolutely. I suppose. Yeah, but I just thought it was quite amusing. I looked at, I've actually got a, the article coming out next week um, that Rob's putting out, um, and I got a, a shot map from Opta, and it, those two shots, and they're practically identical positions on the pitch. Obviously, one goes in, one doesn't, so, yeah. I wonder if Brendan wakes up screaming in the night, um, at that shot specifically. Because <laughs> he's, he's had another bad dream. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be honest, I would. That would, his mummy his mommy comes and rubs his tummy. That would that one would stay with me, that miss in the last minute there. It stayed with me for quite a while. Just days after thinking, ah! We were that close. Why didn't you... It's, <sighs> what a redemption arc for him if he'd have put that in there. On, I, on day one. I know, I know. Especially when we'd let the penalty in in the 90th minute as well. Like, mm. It's just, it would have been perfect. But yeah, I'm trying to think of other occasions. I suppose Bamford against Leicester was a bad miss, wasn't it? Like mm. those times where it's like last minute and somebody has that chance and misses. It's funny, isn't it, how that one going wide of the post and going in the net, the difference between those two things will change how you frame the memory of that day mm. completely. If that had gone in, it would have been one of the all-time games for the ages. Mm. It would be up there alongside Blackburn Villa, Derby in 1997, from, being, from going 3-2 down yeah. in injury time, effectively, to winning it from there. That would have been amazing. And as it is now it'll probably just end up being a footnote in this season when we get promoted. One of those really great <laughs> opportunities as well to act like a proper dickhead towards the away fans. Yeah. Because they've been, they'll have been giving it the big in for all of 30 seconds. Then you go, ah, fuck off, fuck off. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, exactly. I went through that exact sort of, I ran that, not that part of the scenario, but the first part of the scenario, which is where you start bargaining and thinking, no, this can't be right. This can't be a penalty. He's not... He's taken too long to give that, so it can't be a penalty. But he's given a penalty. Oh, no, that means they're going to score and they're going to win. And we're going to lose at home on the first day. Oh, that's not fair. I still don't think it was a penalty. And they're, But they but they were crowing over, they were crowing towards us at that mm. point. And then we could have chucked it back yeah. in their faces. Sorry. Not to worry. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> it did mean we had a 3-3 a draw on the first game. First time since 96-97, which mm -hmm. was against Derby, mm -hmm. which was a season. We got 28 goals, 9 nil nil draws. <laughs> And the other thing that I noticed as well, we sacked obviously Harold Wilkinson started that season. He lost at Wembley a few months before, so I was thinking it could have been ah. poor Daniel, but we've recovered. So, and the, just to not to dwell too much on XG, I don't, you know, but um, three point three nine in that game, which was the second highest in a game this season in the Championship. Right, um, and the, the highest was Chef Wednesday against Wayne Rooney's Plymouth. I knew, I knew you were going to say that. Yeah, I, I don't know why, but I knew, <laughs> you, I knew it was going to involve Plymouth. Yeah, I did some of my own stats around that, didn't I? Cause the, the, First two goals in that game that Portsmouth scored, I worked out that if Georgie had had the same conversion rate last year, he'd have scored 600 and something goals. <laughs> <laughs> it was something ridiculous like that. It was unreal that they managed to get the, yes, yeah. get two yeah. goals from, from that. It was off two goals from 
nine xg yeah. or something stupid, stupid yeah. yeah we were spoken unfair the, basically i was going to say we've spoken in the last week or two about football being fundamentally unfair and that's what a lot of our griping is about yeah. and that is exactly it and it's, it's, just, funny, it's just not fair i mean we were talking with phil about bamba's performance in that game at middlesbrough and that was middlesbrough fans will have left that game being like this is just unfair because they absolutely battered mm. us and just had about 18 shots on target or something but between <laughs> bamba and Silvestri, everything just got blocks at the last minute and it was glorious that day, but it's uh, not so fair when it happens yeah. to you. No. Uh, speaking of Middlesbrough. Yes. Mm. Yeah, I, I was looking again. Obviously, our cup record has bordered on the just farcical, absurdly bad. It, just, it was funny, I, I put in the article, like, it's, in recent years it has, but just ever has mm. just been just terrible. I mean, there was the 1950s, we played Cardiff three years in a row in the FA Cup in the third round at home and lost 2-1 in every single game. <laughs> Three years in a row. It, Grow up, Leeds. It's just ridiculous, the most ridiculous sequence. So, I mean, we've not got any better in recent years. But bizarrely, in the League Cup first round, it's like a safe haven for Leeds getting through. Mm. 17 out of the previous 18 first round ties we got through. We always seem to get... I think the only one we got out, we lost on penalties against Doncaster. Right. So it's like, first round, no problem. Get a, Let a few players, you know, fringe players, get a few minutes. And obviously then what happened against Middlesbrough, I mean, we first time we'd let three in in the first round of the League Cup... Um, campaign ever. It's funny, my, my feelings before and after that game, because I was on holiday that week, and even though you know you're going to go on holiday and have a nice time, and it's for your own benefit and for the benefit of your family, there's still a part of you thinks, I'm doing Leeds dirty by missing a first round <laughs> time. <laughs> yeah. That'll have loads of changes to it in the in the Carabao Cup, which we're not going to win anyway. But you start, you start to tell yourself off, don't you think, oh, you've done the wrong thing there. Like morally, you should have been yeah. there for Leeds. Never the, mind your family. I feel like the first round of the League Cup is for Trying a few players out, ruling a few, a few players out who you go, oh, it'd be nice to see them. Okay, I've seen enough of them. And then winning anyway Yeah, against yeah. someone. I suppose generally, you'd, you'd know this more than me, but I feel like generally we've faced a much lower level of opposition. You, you're spot on, yeah. I think when I was reading that start, I was thinking, actually, we have not played the championship teams as often. Yeah. Like last year against Shrewsbury, like you were saying, you rule people out like Darko Jerby. Mm. I was at that game and he didn't play very well, never got seen again. I, yeah, I remember Yelda being at left back yeah, and, and that was well. not so good, was it? But yeah, I remember then just thinking when we, when I saw the result come through, it's like, oh, we've, we've lost 3-0. Good, I'm glad yeah. I'm on holiday. Heaviest right. defeat in August at Ellen Road since 1993 as well. That right. was against Norwich, lost 4-0. I think Jeremy Goss got That was, that was such, such a good goal, annoyingly yeah. so. Did he get a round of applause for that? He might have done. Before my time. A ripple, I think a little ripple of applause, but he, he bloody spanked it. But then again, I think that was the season when they were in Europe and played Bayern Munich. Bayern. And he was when doing, Jeremy Goss also scored. I was going to say when Jeremy goal. Goss was doing similar antics there, yeah. Yeah, very much so. The, the other thing that I spoke which is just, it doesn't mean anything stat really, but obviously it's Rutair's last game. So I was just looking at Leeds players to make the final appearance in the first round of the League Cup. It's a, it's a solid list, about 15 players. Just a few here, got Steve Guppy. Right. I was um, going to say, it's going to be like Felipe de Costa and Felipe people like that. Costa, yeah, what a guy. Uh, Mike Greller, uh, mm. Noel Hunt, Liam Bridcut. There's, there's, there's quite a few of Paul Huntington, I think, as well. Was Are you sure you've not mis- mistaken that for the Ballon d'Or? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear, Liam Bridcut. It's quite oh. weird, actually. Liam Bridcut played under Thomas Christensen and played with, like, Samu Saez in one game. Mm. They just seemed to, like, drift he, in. He was good when we first yeah, signed him. Yeah, decent player. I, I seem Captain. to remember him thinking, like, oh, he's, he's actually what we need. And then I think Phillips emerged, and then it was like, I'll oh, just get rid of him. Yeah. It's fine. You've made me feel sad about Georgie again now. I was just starting to get sorry. over him. Sorry, sorry. Most tears shed. But, What's the stat for that? Yeah, <laughs> the good news is because he played in that game, he, if Brighton gets to the final now, he can't play in the final because he's cup tied. Yeah. So we'd, He'd probably want to watch it around your house. Yeah. Dan. Well, if he can get out of the ba- unless he can get out of the basement, he will be. You can go roll the blading <laughs> together or something. <laughs> Take him bowling. <laughs> then soft watch play, the game. Soft play area. Perfect. Absolutely. You have to do it. like a 92 championship, you know, when they're Eric Cantona, Gary McAllister, David Batty, they're all in the front room. We just go live to Dan's front room and they just sat there with Ruta. I, I think, because I love Georgie in a paternalistic way, I think I would soon tire of him. <laughs> <laughs> just the noise, the energy. Yeah. It's like, mate, I'm just, um, I'm, I'll be honest, if you need baby in the garden, yeah. what are you doing? I'm just tidying some stuff up. <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah, you definitely spend a long time sat on the... Sat on the toilet with your phone if George is in the house just to get five minutes. Get, oh, you've got, oh, shit, you've given him the sugar squashed. Oh, you're supposed to give him just the sugar free. Anyway. So, yeah, yeah that, was, that was all I had. Well, I know, actually, the other, the other stat was that we conceded three goals in the first two games of the season for the first time since 1959. Mm. So it doesn't happen very often. But obviously we followed that up nicely with three clean sheets. So Yeah, six goals conceded in a week. Sell Georgie. Not, not so much fun, is yeah. it? And, and the, well, it wasn't exactly fun going to West Brom. It's funny, isn't it, how... 
as we've said, even just the passing of a couple of weeks since then, looking back on this as a result, you go, ah, do you know what? It's actually, it was fine. Should have beaten Portsmouth. Ignore Middlesbrough because it was the cup. And then that's a pretty good result. Yeah. I think, I'm, I mean, on a personal level, I, I was at a wedding the night before and I was really hung over. So I, I think I'd gone over to my friend's house and I was, we were barely watching it because it was that bad. Um, so I kind of looked at the stats after and I think you mentioned it on the show, actually, Michael, I was listening to very, very similar stats. So same XG, same number of shots, same number of shots on target, same number of big chances. Um, it was the fewest shots on target and touched in the opposition box overall in a championship match this season. You know, And that's two pretty good teams there who just didn't bother attacking or doing anything really it's quite a rare it's quite a rare beast isn't it not even trying to win it it almost played out like the italian draw didn't it yeah. the mm. you know we, we this is good enough for both of us yeah but it's very early in the season for that sort of thing the first time i can remember leeds doing it would be in the running in the 91 92 season when howard wilkinson went to anfield and set out to stifle liverpool and he and he actually said if we went there and tried to win we'd lose mm. But that point proved to be valuable in the league title race because obviously Man United went there a couple of weeks later. I don't know if you heard about this. And they lost. <laughs> and I remember when George Graham did it for 32 <laughs> games or something yeah. in that season. That was good fun. That was that was a difficult season. That It was really difficult. Yeah, they didn't. They weren't producing XG stats around then. Not in the mid-90s, I don't think. Which is a good shame because <laughs> it, it would have been interesting because I reckon across George Graham's entire reign, we may have had an XG of about... 25 yeah it won't be long until ai can just look analyze video footage of that mm, from yeah. the archives and they'll go right your xg from that game is about 0.0003 well we, we can do that up to actually we do analyze old games for right. clubs and, and look back so like say if leeds wanted the 1972 fa cup final analyzed or i think more if obviously we won the 1972 but 1970 fa cup final would be fun because that was just two teams kicking mm. the shit out of each other so imagine yeah. how many fouls and so we could actually reanalyze that game feasibly and you could actually see what our xg was in that game there's your homework. Is, there you go. Yeah, not me. I'm, <laughs> yeah, somebody else does it. I'm fairly sure you just volunteered to do that. Yeah, that's you fine. Volunteers watch the entire George Grimm <laughs> 96, 97 season. Yeah. Although I think the year after we scored quite a few, didn't we? Yeah, it was fine. Hasselbank game. Put Hasselbank into the team. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was fine the year after. But yeah. Christ, that first year. That yeah. game against Blackburn where it was 4 3 after about half an hour. Yeah. Which is quite weird. Um, so West Brom away, you viewed it through the prism of a hangover. Yes. I think didn't I, pay attention. What did you find afterwards, though, the, with the stats? Yeah, the touches in the opposition box was we had six, which was the fewest under Daniel Farkin. It was the fewest in the championship game for us since September 2017, which was Millwall. Just after we'd won, I think, we beat Burton 5 0, Birmingham 2 0, and gone top. And then we went to Millwall, and everyone was like, we're going to hammer Millwall. And we just, I think we had one shot, and I think it was three, three touches in the opposition box, which is our lowest, our second lowest on record. Right. Which is not good. So, Quell. Yeah. <laughs> was what Thomas Christensen said. I, I believe that that's, that's all he said, wasn't yeah. it? Something like. Yeah. Used to love, love Fazenda, I think, didn't he, Thomas Christensen? A lot of Instagram photos of him in Fazenda, I seem right. to remember. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Fair play to It's good, mate. Yeah, very good. Yeah. So, nil nil against West Brom. Anything else to take from that, or should we move on to the glorious heights uh, of Sheffield Wednesday? Yeah, away? the only other thing was, was the passing, and it was the third fewest completed passes we'd had, and the third lowest passing accuracy we'd had under Farker in that game. So, what happened in that game? Because if there's no if there's no switches in the box and there are not any passes, I really I, again I was I was hungover. So like it's, it's, wrong, man. it's hard to quantify what was actually going yeah. on because you'd almost expect there to be somehow more passes if there's nothing happening in the box because it's just people knocking it around. Was but, it, maybe they're just yeah. knocking it around badly, just like mm. put, putting it out of touch. Yeah, to take, kick, everyone taking half an hour over. Oh, somebody, try, somebody tries to dribble with it and then runs into someone, loses it. Yeah. They do the same. A lot of standing around. Yeah, good. That's yeah. first, entertainment product. Yeah, first game without Ruth Hare, so I guess people were just looking at each other to somebody do mm. something, and we hadn't obviously had the new signs at that point. So. But then we went to Hillsborough and then, on Friday night yeah. and discovered the magic again. Absolutely. I mean, the first thing that I noticed, which is sad really, when I was like putting it in the database on the night of the game, was like Alex Cairns back in the squad mm. and looking at the last squad he was in, 2015, and who he was alongside. It was like a pantheon of Leeds United legends, of Billy Sharp, Calvin Phillips, Grandy Engoy, Casper Sloth. Brian Montenegro and Little Aidan White in his last ever Leeds game. Right. So and then he Goy was, is a name I've not thought of. Fucking thought long. about in a long while. He was he played one game against Norwich and I think he played one nice through ball and everyone kind of went, yeah, he looks he looks good. <laughs> 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 and didn't do anything else. Did we, did we <laughs> sign it? We signed him when he had like a, I'm sure he had a broken back or something yeah. and we signed him anyway. But like, oh, he's fine. <laughs> it feels like yeah, it feels like quite quite a stretch to get that one through the medical. Yeah, yeah, but no, he definitely had some fairly significant injury yeah. when we signed him. Yeah. I was quite surprised he was on the bench in the final game, actually. I thought we'd got rid of him way before that. Same with Brian Montenegro. I think he came off the bench in that Rotherham game. And again, I think he, like, if someone threw the ball down the line and he chested it and knocked it back and somebody was sort of 
yeah, looks good. Should have been should have been given a few more minutes, shouldn't he, Brian? You know, like I mean, I said mm. before about like not in my mind, nothing happened before 2018. With the passing of, of Saul Bamba and speaking to to Phil about that era has brought back memories of that Chilino era and just how tiring it all was. Yeah. But just the sheer amount of football landfill that we experienced in that time, just like Brian Montenegro and loads of yeah. random friends of his. Wikipedia tells me we had an option to make Ngoi's loan move permanent for £2 million. Right. Where did we, where did we loan him from? We did not. Uh, Palermo. Right. But then he ended up... Um, at Dijon. Oh, because next was, year. was he not? Did he not come in alongside Sol Bamber? Was it a similar? Because he came from Palermo on loan. Was it, there? Was, was it a similar time? If I, been, I made yeah. that up, was was that season? January twenty fifteen. Yeah, yeah. Could maybe have been. Is, like, maybe right. are you saying this is a, a Ray and Rod Wallace situation? Just you know, brought in as his mate. I just seem to remember. Yeah, there were there were two players who came in at the same time, and obviously Bamber stuck around, and yeah. and, and Goy didn't. There yeah. you go. He ended up uh, ended up at Dijon the next year, and then Senat. Moisy, <laughs> is that? I believe the correct pronunciation of it. Yeah, uh, very accurate. They seem to not be in a very good league. Right. Can you can you name who kept Alex Cairns off the pitch in that Rotherham game? Who was our goalkeeper? Ooh. This would have taken me a while. To what remember. year was this? Twenty fifteen. Like you were saying about the landfill of players we had. So it's not. It's not Sylvester. 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 Premier League winner. Scott Carson. No. Ross Turnbull? No, no, he didn't play. That's a good guess, it? but it's no, he didn't. He similar. Didn't, I think he don't. This was his last ever games. game, and it was only his seventy-fifth game. He was the backup goalie for years at loads of Premier League clubs. Stuart Taylor. Stuart Taylor. Oh, I would. Wow. I don't think I would have got that. I just <laughs> forgot he was ever here. <laughs> a career where you've played seventy-five <laughs> games. Really, it's a really. His Wikipedia yeah. is tremendous. Just to look at the many, many seasons. Can you think of another was... profession in which that could be the case? Where. You sort of, you almost don't do the job. You're always just sitting there, kind of in the background, waiting to do it, but <laughs> never actually do it. There's, no, there's nothing like yeah. it, is there? No, it's weird. Almost hoping you don't come on. You tear, yeah, you turn up and you do the practice, and you do all, you do all the same things as everybody else, yeah. but you just don't actually do the job itself. Sometimes I wonder about Stuart Taylor because there must have been a point in his career where he was desperate to get, like when he was at Arsenal, wasn't he? Thinking, mm. oh, if I can get an head of David Seaman, establish myself. When you're young and you're hungry and you're breaking through, you think I've got a career in football here. Yeah? <laughs> By the time he gets to the league, he probably thinks, oh, fuck's sake, we've got to yeah. play today. He played 10 games when they won the league in 01 or 02 for Arsenal. 10 games, which is surprising, but he got a medal, winner's medal. That's a high percentage of his overall output, <laughs> it really output is. to be fair. 10 out of 75. Wow. Yeah, so that's a, yeah, Stuart Taylor. How many, so what, a 20-year career, and I've, and I've done 75 appearances in that time. <laughs> it feels like your late-stage ITV output, to be fair. <laughs> when you, you, were sort of, you were turning up and, and going through the motions. <laughs> I achieved as much but never as, actually, as anyone else did there. But never actually put in an appearance. <laughs> <laughs> See, mine was the opposite. I was I was probably high on the appearances list. I did I did turn up. Um but yeah. <laughs> but just to do the work. But I, I did as like I say, I, I achieved as much as anyone there. I just yeah. had a different method of doing it. Uh sorry, we were at Hillsborough, weren't we? Yeah. Um so there's five different players in the starting eleven from the game in March. So we had Gray Kamara, Rute, Somerville, Bamford in March. And they were replaced by Bogle, Strike, uh, Aronson, James and Joseph. Um, but one thing that I noted was it was exactly the same result and it felt like a very, very similar game. 2-0, controlled the game, quite a quite a straightforward win. Um, obviously, we were coming into it, again, talking about XG, but Wednesday had 4.68 in the last home game and they only had 0.43 against us. And I think, I'm not sure how much of that was in open play, but I think it was quite a, a low percentage. I know they had that header towards the end from the long throw, which nearly beat Meslier, but... Just going back to the Portsmouth game, what did you say our XG conceded was in that game? Uh, oh, I can't remember what it was. I think it might have been, I suppose if you exclude penalties, the penalty is about 0.77. Yeah. I think it was just over one if you include the penalty. Right, so we've actually, uh, and again, and I'm taking the bits of information that I want and disregarding <laughs> the rest of it, but ignore Middlesbrough for a minute. And actually we've been really like defensively sound, even though Joe Rodon has yeah. looked like he's got the yips. Yeah, I mean, it, it's the lowest open play XG faced in the AFL. This season so far, Leeds. I think it's just under one XG. Yeah. It's fascinating. Isn't it? Have you did you spot any of the tactical tweaks? And I know this, this is this is not numbers. This is shape. Yeah, I'm 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 not great on the tactics. I, I let other people do that. You know, you know when you just like I'll just stay in my lane. <laughs> like everyone else has got but, much but better knowledge. I, I about think it. like pre Bielsa again. Going back to that pre Bielsa, I never really thought much about tactics. And then Bielsa came, and I feel like it's been like a great awakening, and I've become, I'm not saying I know stuff about tactics, but I've become more tactically aware and started to notice little things that they're doing, like pushing on both fullbacks now. Mm -hmm. Like Ampadu will drop in to create a three, and then both fullbacks will go forward rather than it was normally one or the other mm -hmm. last season. And I noticed, I just wondered if that was like a tactical thing. 
That feels very exciting. Yeah. Discovering something like that. It did I mean, feel when, like when, that. when man discovered the fire <laughs> or the wheel. The first um, like ten minutes of the Portsmouth game, it felt like that. It just felt like everything was like going hundred miles an hour, mm-hmm. and like the fullbacks were flying. Bogle was going forward, and we were just we looked like so much quicker than last season. And then obviously by half time we were losing, and it, they just kind of knocked the stuffing out of them a little bit. But it did feel like first ten minutes were like God, we're going to piss the league. Yeah, here. I mean, going back to the Howard Wilkinson era, one of his mantras was always to get the game won in the first twenty minutes, mm-hmm. to come out of the blocks and try and score a goal in that first twenty minutes, yeah. and it felt like that. Yeah, sort of echo, echoes and memories of that. I'll do an Everton get the game one in the first 86 minutes. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> That's a key one. Yeah, that was funny, wasn't it? <laughs> really funny. And that, think, that, that broke some records, actually, didn't it? It did latest in a game, in a Premier League game, that our team's been leading by two goals and lost. So I feel like yeah. that. I feel like we can do better. Is that a challenge? I feel like we can reclaim. Yeah, 100% we, we, we can, can, can definitely do. claim that stat. <laughs> when, we, when, we go, when we go back when up. When we go back up, we yeah. can probably in a big game, so we're probably against Scum or something. We'll, we'll Three nil up. We can contrive to throw away a bigger lead <laughs> later in the game. I'm trying to think of what records we've yeah we've got that we something like that probably. I feel like a lot of our stuff. I feel like is quite low key, where it's like oh, Team X has not won away for twenty one games, yeah, and, then, yeah. and they've they've not scored in eight games, and then they come up well on road and win three nil. You're so, like, all oh, right. Yeah, basically, we just yeah. I think there was the, the record we had, which is not necessarily a record, but uh, the season we got relegated from the Premier League was the most goals conceded by a team after scoring first in a game. So like again, going mm-hmm. on about scoring first and not conceding that season, we scored first. And I think I remember going on about it when we had like Jesse Marsh as manager. We didn't have a clue what we were doing with the ball, mm-hmm. so it wasn't like we score first and just keep hold of it. We didn't know it was just chaos, wasn't it? So yeah, yeah, we have that record, so kind of stands up. We yeah. broke some then as well about if you have X amount of points after. Yeah, I remember. That. Three games, you never go down. All that, that, was sort of stuff. that was the opposite. That was the opposite stat that it, I it basically was. ended up taking the flak for, just because I'm happened to mention it on the show. <laughs> just sh- shooting the messenger, prick. Mm. It was it was eight points after five games, mm. and nobody had ever got relegated or whatever. Yeah. Or ninety six percent of teams yeah, stay. Like West Brom, ten of ten years before, I think had yeah. done it. Yeah, it ninety six percent of teams stay up from that position. So we're basically we're staying up. Well, well done didn't. us. But yeah, if, if there was a team, I did. Say, I think I seem, seem to say, remember saying at the time, if there is a team that can find that four, five, six percent, whatever it is. It's going to be us. Absolutely. And, and we did. So there's that. Yeah, um, but yeah, Sheffield Wednesday, we'll, we'll keep um, going off piece here, but <laughs> yeah. this was the game that I think it was the, the proper hard reset was this one that mm. reminded everybody that we're actually all right and we can do good things. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, looking at um, just passing accuracy, it was 79% overall against West Brom. In Sheffield Wednesday's half of the pitch, it was 83%. So we had a better in their half than we did in the entire pitch against West Brom. So we'd obviously a bit more uh, cohesion. Um, looking again at Brendan Aronson scored a lovely lovely finish um, all of his goals have come in August only player who's more got more goals for Leeds with them all coming in August is Ramon Nunes right. which again doesn't mean anything but just good to remember Ramon if, if you say the, the words Ramon Nunes what do you think of immediately um, a picture of him with my mate dressed in double Burberry Burberry yeah in, it's in, Burberry in, in, in Tiger Tiger I think he had, he had a Burberry <laughs> he definitely had at least a Burberry scarf plus Burberry shirt there might have even been a Burberry hat or something I can't remember. Burberry it, jumpsuit. It was, <laughs> you couldn't see the bottom half, right. sadly. But he, he probably did. Yeah. Probably well, did. I think we've got very different memories. I mean, that's a good memory. Um, but I went to his last ever game, which was a development game against Wigan. Um, and my friend Ryan um, commented on the tweet that I'd put out about him and reminded me. He snapped his cruciate ligament in that game. And obviously there was about 500 people there. And the screams have stayed with me for 12 years. His scream when he snapped his cruciate ligament was awful. Oh, Crikey. Yeah. So uh, that's... By men memory of Ramon Nunes. But who, was he, um, who was he sold as the replacement for? Was it Gradle? Gradle, yeah. I think Grayson mentioned it afterwards, like, oh, they got rid of Gradle and got me Ramon Nunes, sort of quite disparagingly. <laughs> uh, went to a, <laughs> Good a, luck, Ramon. A, literally a Q&A in Sherburn years ago. Oh, Grayson, that? Yeah, that? Yeah, 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 with uh, Glyn Snowden, who was a lovely, lovely guy. And um, yeah, Grayson was just slacking off basically half the team and <laughs> all those tiny that we'd made. I wanted Casper Gorks in January and Bates wouldn't give me him and sort of stuff like that. And, yeah, I asked him why he saw Lubo Michelin. I just walked up to him in the foyer and he was like, oh, Lubo, we just didn't think he could make the step up to the championship. So cheers, Simon, and just shook his hand and walked off. <laughs> very good. <laughs> so, very, very, very good. Um, but yeah, uh, Chef Wednesday, uh, Matteo Joseph, the youngest striker with two assists in a game since Alan Smith against Charlton in uh, 2000. It was one of my first ever games uh, watching. Uh, again, scoring first, 130 out of the last 31 away championship games when we scored first. Um, scored 67, conceded nine. In those games, that is, um, a, that is a hell of a record. It's a great it? record. Away, yeah, away from home. I think the one game we didn't win was Rotherham. I think relegated last mm. year. It was a terrible performance. Um, or we should have won. Um, yeah, and since that Rotherham game, we scored sixteen goals when we've scored first in away games and not conceded any. So, last team to beat us was Daniel Farkas Norwich. Right, that was under Paul Heckingbottom. So we just one. need to go away and score first. Yeah, basically. Basically. So. 
Huh. Um, easy, yeah. Easy. Dan James, good luck charm, won 13 out of 13 under Daniel Farker when he scored, which is a record for a player under manager, if you want to call it a record. I just love those kind of things. Uh, the second best, Neil Kilkenny under Simon Grayson, won nine out of nine. Alan Smith under Peter Reid scored in six games, lost five, drew one. Just a little shout out there for that. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah, we just need Dan James to keep scoring, really. Hopefully he's fits again now. I don't know what the state of play is with his injury, but... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, Willie Nonto's taking a bit of a kick for Italy, we've discovered oh, really? during the international mm-hmm. break. Hopefully he's he's fine. But, um, yeah, he's not the shiny. He's been he's actually been consistently excellent at this level as Dan James. Um, yeah. And I think we um, possibly missed him against Hull, one of his one of his many boyhood clubs. Mm-hmm. Um, that's Coops, isn't it? Uh, but for his, from that neck of the woods. And... Um, but we were all distracted by shiny new toys, so don't really give him a second thought, poor lad. Yeah, isn't there like thing going around that we need to get a chant for him? Yeah, going, we do, uh, we do. But it's quite a difficult. I've name, seen, so. a, I've seen a few. They're all complicated. Yeah, it needs to be snappy yeah. and with few words, ideally, just to get things going. You can work on a longer one, but I did see the one I liked most of all, which was again I can't credit the right person on Twitter, but it was something like he's fast, he's strong, he's got no fucking song, Dan James, Dan James. <laughs> <That'll do. laughs> yeah, that's nice. Well, like why don't we just do the Gary Monk one, which is Gary? Gary Monk, Gary, Gary Monk. Just do Daniel, Daniel James, over and over again. Could work. Happy Could work. Speaking of Hull, then, are we going to uh, move into that one? Yeah. yeah. J- just the last one on the Chef Wednesday, just for oh, yeah. Farker. Um, that was his 100th win in the Championship, and that was the quickest, well, say quick, fewest number of games um, by a manager to 100 wins at that level since 1903. Right. Which was quite impressive. Um, yeah. And it was the quickest in the Championship era as well. Him, and I think he was about three games quicker than Mick McCarthy was. So, um, yeah, it, Things like that. I think obviously not all managers stick around at that level for mm. such a period of time with such good teams to sort of break that record. But when it's the first since like just after the Victorian era, it's, a, it's a very impressive. Yeah, it's achievement. quite interesting how he's kind of he's carved himself this niche mm. management-wise. I mean, he'll be back there when we get promoted. <laughs> <laughs> you, you do get you do get that sense, don't you? There's there's not there's not the romance attached to it. It's all I've said before. It all feels very sort of transactional and we'd prob- pragmatic. Probably keep him. For, you think for a bit. After he's been trashing the recruitment, mm-hmm. and they didn't get me what I wanted, well, off you go. Then we'll get somebody else who does. Thanks for your work. See you later. Mm. I think he does have the worst win percentage in Premier League history, but we won't mention mention that. Let's worry about Ever. the Premier League if and when we get there. Yeah, um, exactly. But we will get there by beating teams like Hull City, Johnny. Absolutely, yeah. Um, good win. Just to mention Ayo Tanaka, obviously we mentioned Dan Jay hasn't got a song. Ayo Tanaka's already got a, a song. Um I put a tweet out that he fifty percent of his name has the letter A. I think you quite retweeted it, Michael. A very strong tweet that. Yeah, um, I actually mentioned it to Jamie and, and Gazo. I work with who are Leeds fans, and I said I think I'm going to get quite a lot of abuse for this tweet because like, I just think people are just going to say you'd get a fucking life. Yeah, and people just seem to absolutely love it. I, I was quite great. surprised. Yeah, quite surprised. Bobby yeah. Webb got a shout out. Somebody replied actually saying, "Oh, um, good stat about my granddad. Uh, he'll be really pleased. He died actually last year, unfortunately, but I thought." Is he actually his granddad or has he made that up? So I would actually like to know if that is his granddad. <laughs> Bobby Webb was that somebody Bobby called? Webb was his name. Oh. Played three games in the 50s for I'll, Leeds. I'll confess, I first read it and went, yeah, it was a... hey, oh, it's only two like. <laughs> <laughs> there was that oh, the full name, right, the full name. <laughs> if you're on Countdown, you're disappointed, right? If you start off with two vowels. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's tough. So that's nice, good. Yeah. Well, you know, AO, it's 62.5% of his name's vowels as well. Mm. So um, <laughs> there's one player who had higher percentage who's played for Leeds. Unfortunately, passed away quite young. Hugo Ekiog. Yeah. yeah, yeah, a lot of owls. Six out of nine. Um, I like the fact that you had to put the, you put a percentage figure on that. I can imagine you sitting there with your calculator working it out. And it's so inc- one, two, three, it's, it's very sad. I'm not even going to tell you how it works out, but it's incredibly sad. Did you, use spread, did you use a spreadsheet? Of course, use a spreadsheet. I always use a spreadsheet. Amazing. Excel, Microsoft Excel, it does everything for you. So. A vowel, a vowel um, formula. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, Love sad. Ah, yeah. oh, good on you. Yep. So, uh, yeah, Nayo Tanako came off the bench. Uh, obviously, there's all the good things in the game, but. Uh, 18 completed passes which was only 13 fewer than Hull after he came on and he actually played for Japan against China yesterday and completed more passes than China in the 20 minutes that he was on the pitch so it's a 7-0 was it 7-0 yeah. Wow. yeah so China weren't great obviously but hey talking about Hull City do you know the fact about Hull City is that one of those famous kind of little oh, trivia no, you can't colour in any of the letters that's right it's the, only, that the, right it's the only football team I don't in... get that I still don't understand never understood that it's the only football team there's in no this, completed this loops country. so there's basically. no loops there's no O there's no A where you can shade the middle of the letter you could yeah. see I always think of it you could. You can colour in the U I was going to say the U you I, can... I think of it as like holding water <laughs> <laughs> it would it's like a, it's a reservoir it's like a cup <laughs> right and the Y obviously as well yeah what's the that'd be a different stat which one wouldn't hold any water? Because obviously A's and O's it would run off the edges. 
And then I'll have to ask my spreadsheet when I get back. <laughs> yeah. Expected water retention. There'll be some Scottish third division. There'll be someone with, with zero water retention. Right, anyway. Save yeah. us, Johnny. Yeah, uh, Man of Solomon, first player to get an assist on his debut since Barry Douglas, quite a few mm. years ago, Bielsa's first game. Uh, I thought it looked good. I mean, there's not really any sort of standout stats I could see for Solomon. Um, but I did like the fact that he went round the outside and put that cross in. I think there was a lot of cutting in and trying to mm. um, get a shot off, but he looks like he will get quite a few... So I think he got two assists for Spurs in about three games last year. So what happened after that? Um, Very yeah. injured. Um, yeah, we'll mention that. <laughs> he's fine. He's fine now. For he's now. fine for now. He's fine now. For now. Yeah. Yes. Um, the other thing as well was that the passing again it improved a hell of a lot. It was ninety-one percent um, against Hull, which again was seventy-nine against uh, West Brom. Are they, have we got short passes or long passes or in between passes? It's short. I think it's the highest or second highest percentage in the championship of short passes right. this season. Leads so. It's a lot of... A lot of Does that, that point to how we're playing then? Silly yeah. question. Yeah, definitely. A, a lot of short passes. Hmm. Interesting. And a lot got, of those are terrifying ones between Melier and Ampadu. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that pass when he yeah put him under pressure was... Mm. I think he's, he's actually, his accuracy in general has been fine, Melier, in terms of like in overall. But obviously that, when he does something like that, that's all you remember. You don't remember the... 29 yeah. good ones, you remember the one bad one. Is it just me or do you ever like sort of sit there and imagine you think, what's just gone through your head in the split second between that ball leaving your foot and it not arriving yeah. quite at, um, at Ampadu? It's hard, doesn't it? Because you, if you've been told you put, you play short and there's not an option, it's at what point you think the balance of getting told off for not doing as you're told... Yeah. versus getting told off for doing what you're told, but doing it in a way that's, yeah. that's obviously very, this, very this dangerous. Exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. Too much to process. That's why I'd always be, I'd take the throwing, just kick it out. Just walk <laughs> well over the pitch. <laughs> well a bit out. They can defend the throwing afterwards, it's fine. <laughs> or you think about it. Sunday league. <laughs> but uh, in, at the other end of the pitch as well, uh, passing in the final third, 84%, which was our second highest on record. So to me, that points to attacking cohesion, people knowing where people are. Um, so I think the, the only game that was higher was Derby, July 2020, when everyone was still drunk mm-hmm. after the promotion. We had oh. a higher percentage, so there you go. Hopefully, once the, obviously, Laji Ramazani came on and I think he completed every single pass that he made. Um, but the, obviously, at that point in the game, it was 2-0. We weren't really going forward with the ball. We were very much, let's keep hold of it and see the win out, which is fine, I guess, because we need wins on the board. Mm. Wins. Points make prizes. Yep. And give um, Junior Furpo a shout out as well. Joint most assists in the championship. That was a lovely pass for the... Renaissance man. Of, yeah, in 2024, I should say. Yep. But no, it was, a, it was a really good, really good assist and he looks he looks good going forward. Is there anything to suggest he's better at defending or is it just that it doesn't matter as much? Uh, I'd have to look. Uh, it's quite difficult with defence. Stats are really difficult with defenders. If you've mm. got a team who... You look at somebody like James Tarkovsky for Bur- when he was at Burnley, now at Everton. He's always top for... Headed clearances, clearances. Mm. Um, I mean, strike is top for successful passes and joint top for interceptions, um, which is good, uh, obviously. And I think he's second for headed clearances as well. I think I read in Chris's piece, he was talking about we missed him at the end of last season, even though we did have that great run with Rodon and Ampadu. When it sort of fell apart, we, it's almost like we needed him in there to defend him in the QPR games, the obvious one where we fell, fell to pieces. Um, so he might have made a, made a bit of a difference, but he, he is a, obviously he's a big presence. I don't know if you've still got the nickname for him now he's cut his hair or is it different? Uh, he's, he's, no, he's still a big sexy pirate. Big pirate. sexy tidier pirate. Yeah. Yeah. Pirates can change. Yeah. Pirates can be tidy. There you go. So it all points to promotion. Um, Basically. Before yeah. Easter. Johnny, yeah. that's great. Yeah, simple as that really. Thanks um, for thanks for letting us know about yeah. that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just in terms of like the overall um, statistics, we're in like the top five for shots, expected goals, uh, expected goals again, successful passes, passing accuracy, possession, Big chances, shots on target first. Only Middlesbrough have, have had fewer shots first and shots on target first. So I don't want to say trending in the right direction. That was a, that's a terrible thing to say. But on the right um, trajectory, that's the that's right a, trajectory. I was going to say that's a Kinnearism. I, yeah. I was going to say I've been listening back <laughs> to last year's interview with Angus Kinnear because he's coming in again. So obviously you want to go back and yeah. find things to basically hang him with. Um, and he was saying that even in a worst case scenario, he thought that Leeds would be in the top four or five in the division, just given our revenues and so on and so forth how, how we basically dwarf much of this division but it all seems to be like pointing in the right direction so far limited data set as we said we need to that's it yeah genuinely caveat that because somebody will pick you up on it as, they always, as they always do yep. but um so far so good do we want to say do you want to go as far as to say that 
Yeah, three clean sheets in a row. I think if someone had said after the Middlesbrough game, we get three clean sheets mm-hmm. and we'd have seven points out of those three games, we'd be pretty happy. I mean, we've we've looked defensively solid in the last three games and decent going forward. And obviously we've reintegrated Brendan back into the team and things like that. And Max Verber is really happy to be here, apparently. So that's nice. And, uh, <laughs> so if we need him, he'll be there. And obviously, with you know the new signings, that's going to be the really interesting key thing. I mean, I'm not I'm not going to lie and say that I know a lot about Largi Ramazani and you know he's uh, you know playing in La Liga and things, but um, he looks. Do you know his you know, vowel percentage? Off the top of your head? <laughs> oh Jesus, there's a lot of sense, quite a lot <laughs> actually. A lot. There's a lot. Yeah, there yeah. Are a lot. Yeah. Um, can I? Do you do requests like a good DJ, a good DJ? Of can you do some stats on points in which kit we wear? Because I I always end up fascinated by stuff like this because we've not conceded a goal yet in the yellow kit. Oh. That's. Good. I don't actually keep track of the uh, the kits. I think Andrew Dolan does. He might be the he might be the man to ask. Yeah. So next like away game, we've got Cardiff away. Probably going to be in white for that. I presume mm-hmm. Norwich away. Going to put us in white, obviously, unless we're going to the <laughs> new fancy blue. Might, they might go f- try and get some use out of that third kit. I reckon. Um, Sunderland away in October. We'll probably wear yellow there. Yeah. I, I imagine. And that'll usually, be an, usually wear white. I think at Sunderland. Mm, they're not these days. No. Not these days. But um, red and white stripes was blue peacock kit last season and it felt jinxy yeah that's why i'm wondering about it but um yeah because we can wear yellow at sunderland yeah so it'd be interesting to see if we actually concede any goals because we know as as we've already established we score first away we win so exactly it's all good isn't it all good johnny thank you for coming in um let's have another catch up maybe in the next international break another few weeks a bit more data and all that so the next one is yeah it's after that sunderland game isn't it so we've got burnley cardiff coventry norwich and Sunderland, possibly a bit more challenging than the than the opening sequence. Do you think marginally? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I've just checked. By the way, we were definitely we were in the peacock with the light socks at Sunderland last year. Yeah, yeah. Lights, which I don't think you were allowed to change elements of your kit. Are you or were you in the EFL? You're supposed to just wear what what you declare to the EFL, and then yet they let us break their own rules, which is probably why it all went wrong. Is that? Well, I can't remember what the normal socks were. They were just dark. They were dark peacock socks, weren't they? Well, the whole th- yeah, because in the Premier League, you're allowed your kits and then certain tweaks on the kits. Like, so for example, we've got we had the the light minty coloured shorts, yeah, didn't we? So if you so you could wear it maybe against somebody who wears dark dark shorts, or whatever. But I don't think they allow it in the EFL. But obviously, the ref must have seen the blue socks against their black socks and gone change them or whatever, or red socks, whatever they were. I think it's red. Chelsea yeah. away was that when we wore those like limey green socks? Maybe? Yeah, yeah, and uh, Gellart scored. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, enough, enough, enough hot sock chat. We'll uh, <laughs> we'll, pick, we'll pick this one up in, in mid October. Hot so, sock chat sounds gross. Uh, so what was interesting because we said when we were chatting about how this season is unfolding that we'll probably it'll be that international break, maybe November when we've got a proper handle on where this is all heading. So uh, if we chat about unless it, we don't like it. In which case we'll ignore it. In which case we'll ignore it and just say we expect to pick form up from here. <laughs> Fine. Right, Johnny. Thanks again. Thanks very much. We'll see you soon. The Square Ball Podcast.